This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship together. Good morning and welcome to LPC's online worship service for Sunday, March 22nd, 2020. I'm Linda Soper, your Elder of the Day. This week's friends at home include all of us. So please reach out to someone that you haven't seen for a while, especially those who are in rehab or can't have any visitors at all. Our student of the week is Haley Bowen, but let's think of all of the college students home with their families for the first time in a long time, learning to live together all over again. And also those with young kids at home who need to get through online teaching and instruction. It's odd that we can't be together for our worship service, but I'm hoping that something in this online forum will speak to you. So let us worship God together. Thank you. This morning's responsive reading is Psalms, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You make me lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside still waters. You restore my soul. You lead me in the right paths for your name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Are you feeling the weariness of the wilderness yet? It hasn't even really been that long, really. But in some ways it feels like it's been forever since we've been told to physically distance ourselves from each other. Maybe it feels like it's been so long because we just don't know how long this will last. And I'm reminded of the people wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. 40 years. And according to the map, they just circled the same geographic area over and over during that time. Maybe this time of not being able to gather in person is beginning to feel that way to you. We're all just in a holding pattern, circling over and over the same wilderness, wondering when we'll get to land in safety. Did Jesus know his time in the wilderness would last 40 days? Did he know there was an end in sight, a specific date that it would all end, his time of isolation and wilderness? I think 
knowing how long something will last, especially something hard, I think it helps us tolerate the hardship. Did Jesus know how his life would unfold once he left the wilderness? How much did he know about what was to come? It's one thing for him to know the path ahead would be tough. It's quite another to know exactly what it would be like. We don't know what the path ahead will look like. We just know it's going to be hard. I heard from a doctor from the Wuhan area of China. He was lamenting that the European and American cultures didn't seem to be learning from the early mistakes that they themselves had made early in trying to deal with the virus. I'm seeing the same Facebook pictures you are of college students on spring break gathering at beaches. I'm hearing of friends continuing to hold gatherings in their houses, assuming it's okay as long as they don't go above that special threshold of 10 people. I know folk who are just not getting how serious this is, how little we are learning from what's happening in Italy. That's human beings for you. We're slow learners. Some things we have to learn on our own. We just don't learn them by being told. We have to experience it apparently for ourselves, which frankly, if you were to ask me, is a lousy system, a lousy way to create human beings. Are you listening, God? But that is where faith does give us an advantage, just one of the many advantages faith offers us in times like this. Go back thousands of years, and we see the Israelites wandering in the desert. Go back a couple of thousands of years, and hear about Jesus in the wilderness. Go back to the history of the Christian people and realize just how many of our ancestors found comfort and guidance from these words of the 23rd Psalm that Jenny just read. Probably one of the most well-known passages of scripture beloved by Jews and Christians. Yes, so often we associate these words with funerals, and that's probably the last time you heard or read these words until this morning. But the beauty of these words is how much they help us through both the ordinary times and the trying times. Through boring day-to-day -day life, remember what that was? And through the days when we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And that's exactly where we are right now. We're in the looming shadow of what is coming but we can learn from this scripture that guided people through peace times and pestilence and plague, the scripture that surely Jesus turned to in his time in the wilderness. There's such a sentiment of care running throughout these words. God is my shepherd, our shepherd. That was a radical statement because earthly kings were also referred to as shepherds for how they claimed to be taking such good care of their people, even when they weren't. This image reminds us of the power of God's love to care for us and care for us so abundantly that we're able to care for each other, which is what we might be seeing out of some of our earthly leaders. The psalmist was clearly in distress. Maybe you are too about now. Maybe it's hitting you in waves how these frightening times are upon us. Maybe you're aware that these times can erode our trust, can erode our hope, can erode our love, but maybe, maybe these words through your faith can give you another lens. God is restoring our souls. The winner take all attitude is falling by the wayside. The senator who sold a huge percentage of stocks right before the news hit that would send the stock market plummeting. He's not being celebrated for his wisdom. He's being shamed for his lack of care and compassion. The couple who hoarded hand sanitizer in the hopes of selling it for a huge profit, they're being shamed on Facebook for their selfishness. Our old ways are falling by the wayside right now. We can lean heavily on the God who shows us what it is to sit at a table with our enemies. Because right now, no one can be our enemy. They too might be a day away from falling ill. I have a standing date with my two friends, Kim and Kelly, on Friday mornings to exercise and we eat together and we catch up on the week and support each other. 
it's sacred time to me. And this Friday, I wasn't feeling great. And I knew I had to be responsible. And I needed to cancel. And then my friend Kelly went out with a friend of hers who wasn't feeling sick. And I got jealous. Yeah. Real Christian to me, I know. But there it is. I'm recognizing how times like these can lure us off the paths of righteousness. And I try to be compassionate with myself, maybe even laugh at myself, and go back to these words from the 23rd Psalm. The traditional English translation of the Hebrew is this, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. But apparently a better translation of the Hebrew is this, surely goodness and mercy will pursue me all the days of my life. Yes, surely God's goodness and mercy is pursuing us, chasing us down, always trying to wrap us in a blanket of care, always guiding us to sit by the still waters and the green pastures, always filling our cup to overflowing. This isn't a time for just getting through or getting by or just surviving. It's a time for recognizing the deeper into the psalm we go, the deeper into our relationship with God we go. Each verse takes us deeper into the heart of faith. There are things we'll learn about ourselves and about each other and about God and about the world the deeper we go into this journey. My oldest, Ben, is coming home today. His service with the Peace Corps cut short so disappointed. He's heard how much more you get out of the second year that you serve versus the first. The longer you're in that context, the deeper the experience, the richer the relationships. On the other hand, even though he's sad to be missing that second year, he looks at his girlfriend Lauren, whose service only lasted three months, and those three months were only training. And he recognizes how fortunate he is to have had that much more time to go deeper. Who knows what will emerge in these days? Who knows how we'll look back on this time, barely through the first week of not gathering in person? Who knows what challenges we'll face or how long until we can see each other face to face? The deeper we go into this Lenten season, the deeper our relationship with God and with each other and with all God's creation. The Good Shepherd is walking us through the midst of these trials, through the valley of the shadow of death. The darkness is not changed, but we are. The more we learn how God is changing us, sustaining us, restoring us. With God, we will walk through these times, a sheep of our Good Shepherd's own flock, children of our Maker's family.
you know you're steadfastly. You know all the ways that you care for us, heart and soul. You know that we're not alone. That even though we cannot see each other face to face, you gather us in close, like a mother hen gathers her chicks. And this day, we especially ask that you be with Ray Boyer as he is worried about his friend and co-worker Paul, whose wife Susan just died from lymphoma. As Ray worries about Paul and his recovering from alcoholism, AA has kept him sober for so many years, but now with no in-person meetings, we ask that you give him fortitude and strength to seek out ways to be supportive. We give you thanks that Ray's high school colleague, Athena, has recovered from the coronavirus and is finally home in Virginia after being quarantined in Japan on a cruise ship. We really hear our prayer. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. And we lift up to you, John, and his wife, Dolores, and all those who cannot be together for the foreseeable future. Help them to know that you are holding their loved ones in the palm of your hand, that you are walking with them through this time of uncertainty and darkness. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. We lift up all those who are caring for those in hospitals, in assisted living, in retirement homes, in nursing homes, for all those who are keeping the places clean, who are making the meals and delivering the meals. Be with them, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. We lift up to you all nurses and doctors and all those who are working in hospitals. We especially ask that you be with Josephine in her work, with Dot and Charlie's daughter Karen in her work, and with Cassandra Francis Lyko, as they are all nurses on the very front lines and are lacking even the basic supplies to keep themselves safe. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. We give you thanks for all those who are harvesting and picking our food, packaging our food, trucking it and shipping it and stocking our shelves with food for those working in grocery stores, for those making our bread, for those making sure we have the essentials in our lives, for those on the front lines in grocery stores and the food chain, the Lord here. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. We know, gracious God, everyone's lives are affected. All of us praying this day, our lives have been affected by this. We ask that you help us keep perspective between what is an inconvenience and those who are truly in danger. Give us patience with each other. Give us patience with the situation. 
Help us be compassionate and kind to everyone in our lives. It is so easy to succumb to the negative and the whining and the complaining and the fear. And yet in your compassion, Lord. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Hear us now as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. And now may the peace of God go with you.